This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, I think I would have loved to have been able to bring Steve in as a nasty heel to work with Stone Cold Steve Austin. I think Doc, you know, was one of those guys that would be able to go and be a formidable opponent for old Stone Cold and get more than more than one match out of him. And, uh, and that was the idea. You know, that was the idea <laughs> very much that everybody you brought in. Who can we feed to Stone Cold? And Doc would have been a fresh opponent. How about this for a debut? Vince McMahon introduces him to the crowd on April 28th, 1998 in Richmond, Virginia, but it's not on TV. And then he goes out and beats two cold Scorpio with a backdrop driver. Uh, was there discussions about, Hey, we need to give this guy the vignette treatment or not. I'm just, I've always been fascinated with here's how we introduce Val Venus. Here's how we introduce razor Ramon. Here's how we introduce dusty, whatever. And then there's other guys where, nope, they're just, they're here. What was the thinking in terms of the presentation to bring him in and and establish him to this American audience? Well, this was during a Russo time. And I think that, you know, there were different ideas banning about, I believe that Dr. Death coming in and doing vignettes with him probably would have helped him some. Um, but, uh, that didn't happen. (laughs) What does that mean? Well, I'm sure we're going to get there. Okay. So Williams heads back to Japan to finish up. Uh, is there any concern when you've got a guy working a style like that, that, Hey, we're bringing him in, but now we're letting him finish up. What if he fucks around and gets hurt? That's always a concern. You know, whenever anybody, uh, is finishing up anywhere or works anywhere that is not standardized rings and, and under our supervision. So that's always a concern. Did you have any involvement with the negotiation end of bringing Steve in? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm not asking you to give us specifics, but you know, what was important to him or whatever? Yeah. You know, what was important to Steve was money and Steve was looking for a steady gig. Steve was looking for something that he knew was going to be there and come in and make a difference and possibly make some huge money and the opportunity to come in and have the possibility of working with the biggest name in the business. And in Austin at the time was very attractive. Is, uh, is it part of your recollection that Dr. Death was asked to drop some weight before being put on TV? I think that narrative is out there that you guys wanted him to, uh, step his game up aesthetically. Do you recall that being an issue? No, not to my knowledge. I, I know that Doc came in and Doc worked the camps and came in and worked a couple of weeks in the ring with Tom to basically get the ring rust off because yeah. he hadn't been working for a while. And so he came in to do that. But I don't recall. I don't remember Steve ever being heavy other than when he first broke in. The observer says there's serious consideration being given to using Vince McMahon as sort of a manager, although not using that term for Steven Regal and Steve Williams, as if he's bringing two shooters in to beat Austin for the title and give guys instant steam. And I got to tell you, we've all heard, oh, Dr. Death's coming in for a program with, with Steve Austin. We've all heard that, but this idea that Vince McMahon was going to quote unquote, manage them. Now that that's news to me. Do you remember this ever being discussed? No. Okay. We've all covered this before in the archives, uh, brawl for all is where Dr. Death really makes his, uh, world wrestling federation television debut. And the rumor in innuendo was that this was a vehicle to get him over as this big, bad heel for a run with Steve Austin. Do you want to poke holes in that narrative? Sure. The, I think that first of all, uh, for Steve to come in, I think Steve should have been brought in a completely different way. Unfortunately, as I said, sometimes how you push someone and what you say to put a talent over to bring them in or to get somebody to want to use them will, will somewhat backfire on you if you're not careful. And in in this case, you know, it, it was – You know, he's the baddest man on the planet and nobody can beat him. And, you know, if it were a shoot by God, he'd walk through that wall. You want to see him walk through that wall? Just tell him, walk through that wall and he'll be on the other side. No, no question. He'll just do it. 
motherfuckers, you, you, you know, he'd kill you in eight seconds. Only because he wants to have five, fun for five. Um, that kind of buildup became, again, the catalyst for this stupid uh, brawl for all idea. And um, then it became, okay, well, you want to get somebody over? They, they win this. And if this guy can kill everybody, beat everybody, he shouldn't have any problem being in it. But he needs to know that it'll be real and the other guys in there. This isn't to put him over. But if he gets over in it, then great. Um, and... Some people thought that uh, he would just steamroll through everyone. Some people thought, meaning Jim Ross. Well, that's fresh there, County. I'm just saying, if, if there's a goddamn law you want him to go through, he goes through the goddamn thing. Did it ever get so far as to talking to Steve about working with Dr. Death? About Austin? To Steve but, Austin? Yeah. I think Steve Austin was fucking thrilled to be able to have a doctor death to work with. I don't know that there was ever any aversion to it at all. It, it is just sort of interesting that, you know, sometimes, and maybe I'm just thinking of Jeff Jarrett and his new podcast, my world, it feels like Austin was only at the time working with established top guys, not necessarily somebody who's fresh off, you know, a Jap, a Japan run, right? Just cause we didn't have anybody like a Dr. Death that was able to come in and do that. Fair to say. Well, you Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. So you get a notice anytime we upload some new content and go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.